Good morning. I'm going to talk to you about um, the x-ray vision of the aorta. And we've got some surprises, so we'll um, show you. So I'll go through the objectives. Um, we'll look at cardiac gating versus not gating CTs. Um, look at kind of the difference, how you define a thoracic aortic aneurysm and an abdominal aortic aneurysm. Uh, difference between a Stanford type A and type B. And then we'll look at the difference between malignant and benign. Now, we're not talking cancer here, but um, that's going to be the surprise at the end. So keep, keep awake. I hope you've had your coffee. So this is just, this is a CT scan. Um, this is, these are the kind of images we can generate from a CT scan. Um, and so you can see the um, aortic arch right here, um, the aortic root. And this has got, there's some calcium there descending thoracic aorta, abdominal aorta, then you've got your iliac arteries and femoral arteries. Um, you know, you can also see the heart and the kidneys. So this will be helpful. This is, this is a relatively normal, although quite a bit of atherosclerosis. So we're going to talk a little bit about gating. And um, I know this seems like, you know, I was telling my sister-in-law who's a hospitalist, I'm like, she's like, I don't know if I really care about gating. But I think you should. If you're diagnosing pulmonary emboli or aortic disease, you need to know a little bit about gating. So for pulmonary emboli, we do not gate. Um, and so you'll get an image of the aorta that looks a little bit like this. And that's okay, and there's less radiation. So people come into the emergency department all the time with shortness of breath. They get a PE study, and we don't gate it. Less radiation, more people, less radiation. However, if you have aortic disease or suspecting aortic disease, gating is best. And here you can see the aorta, and you can really nicely see the takeoff of the right coronary artery. So that's some of the difference. There also will be a quiz here in the middle and at the end. Can you say something? Can you say what gating means? What does it mean? Good question. So here is an ECG from, uh, from iStock. I got a pretty picture. So basically, what non a non-gated study is going to image just whenever the scanner goes on, and it's going to image kind of one point in time. What gating does, and we do it differently for different what we're trying to image. For an aorta, we're going to image during diastole because there's the least amount of motion. I don't want to image here. I want to image here, and then we'll image for not just one point in time, but maybe from, you know, it depends on what we set it up, but maybe 20% of the cardiac cycle. So it's more radiation. So it's good for aortas, because you decrease the motion, but not for every person. So here's just another, um, so when you order a CTA of the chest, um, we do, you have to diff tell us what you're looking for. So are you looking for a PE, or are you looking for an aortic pathology? We can also do both, but we just, you know, we'll, the CT text will target the area and it'll pacify what, you're, what we're looking for. So aortic dissection, aortic aneurysm, the aorta is going to be maximally opacified. Pulmonary arteries, not quite as much. For pulmonary embolus, you're going to get the pulmonary arteries to be maximally opacified. This, it, the aorta is two, but you really want to make that clear um, on the order. H same patient, just showing this one's not gated. We're evaluating for PE. The aorta is not um, opacified as well. Get a little bit of motion. Here's the same patient, really nice line of the aorta. Really clear, really bright. So that's what we're trying to achieve. All right, here's the quiz. Cardiac gating is best for PE or aortic pathology? <laughs> Excellent. Aortic. Okay, so why not gate for PE? Radiation dose. So, we, you know, we'll probably do, I mean, I, I don't know how many we'll do today from the ER. Um, five, ten CTs today. Everybody doesn't need extra dose of radiation. Okay, Kim, that's a question. So if somebody comes in here you know, with chest pain, mm -hmm. rule out section, rule out PE, 
So do you assume that when you make what it is a community study? Or do you, do you, you don't know because you say you want the best image? If it's so, so different scanners have gaining capabilities and some don't. Um, like you said, when, when we were in the glory days and had all the, we, we got a really fancy CT scanner at Swedish Cherry Hill. Uh, so not every facility has that, that type of ability. Um, if it says aortic pathology and it's done here, it will be gated. Um, but that varies based on site. It, throughout Swedish, we're mostly, all of our aortas are gated. So if you say aortic pathology, it should be gated. Um, why, gate, cardi uh, why cardiac gate for thoracic aortic pathology? Anyone? So to get the clear delineation of the pulse. Uh, yeah, just less motion. Because sometimes you see that aortic root and you're like, I don't know, is it moving or is it, you know, is it a dissection? So if it's not moving, you can really see it clearly and determine if it's a dissection or not. Okay. Um, so the ACR has its appropriateness criteria. So just to know that CTA is the number one for if you're suspecting a thoracic aortic aneurysm. You want to do CTA of the chest. Um, so how do we determine a thoracic aortic aneurysm? So um, the size of my aorta, thoracic aorta is going to be different from somebody who's a lot bigger and taller than me. So we base this on height weight, age, and gender. This is for the thoracic aorta. And every time I'm close and I'm not quite sure, I get my cables out and start looking at this based on the patient's age and body habitus. So this, you know, two foot, I think she's two one, and Erica, Eric Irvin, who's six seven, they're gonna have different size aortic roots. Uh, the older you get, that uh, media stretches out some, and you're going to get more dilatation. So we look at the charts for the thoracic aorta. And here's a case, nice gated study showing um, an ascending thoracic aortic aneurysm and a coronal image of that. And then there's a 3D version of it. Okay, abdominal aortic aneurysm. Okay, how do we determine the size of that? It's three. Me, you, everybody here, it's three. So that's, and that's not when you operate, but that's when you start following. And again, um, so ACR, looking at what's the appropriate imaging. Um, for screening, an ultrasound's good, especially in a thin patient. Um, if the patient's presenting, you know, in the emergency department, we get a CTA abdomen. That's going to be the definitive study, uh, but an ultrasound can be very good. So here we have a patient, another CT 3D model. Uh, here's the liver, the heart, and then you've got the aorta, and things bigger than normal. So here we have the um, a sagittal imaging, sagittal image showing this multi you know, lobulated aneurysm, probably contained rupture. It doesn't show as well, but here's the calcified, you know, aorta, and it's just all going out. And, you know, not good. Okay, here's the question. What's the size of an abdominal aortic aneurysm? Good. See, that's easy. All right. And then dissections. Okay, so there's Stanford A and Stanford B. A involves the ascending thoracic aorta. And it can go descending too, but that's still an A. If the ascending's involved, it's an A. If the ascending's not involved, starts at the arch or uh, descending, it's a B. There might be a quiz. Okay, so here we have, so I was out in, I was in Redmond, uh, at the um, ACC in Redmond, Swedish Redmond, and um, CT technologist, actually I talked with the ER doctor about this case before, and she said, I got a patient with neuro symptoms who's also got some arm symptoms, has a cold arm now. What should we do? 
So then, okay, let's start with the CT neck, CTA neck and go from there. So the CT tech calls me. He, didn't, he wasn't aware of this conversation. He calls me and he's like, Doc, you need to come right now. So when people say that, I, I come. <laughs> and sure enough, we have a dissection involving the ascending aortic arch. It, it's hard to see. I'm used to being in the dark, but um, I like the, this is lovely. Um, but you can see this dissection here. Okay, so what type is this? A or Stanford A or B? Yes. A. Okay. So this is a little scary. So um, we were only getting the neck. So I said, okay, let's do the whole chest and abdomen. Okay, we got that. It's type A. Back to that. All right. So. Just to go back, acute chest pain, um, suspect aortic dissection. You're gonna start, I mean, this is a you know, generally emergency department patient. Everybody gets a chest x-ray just to start. You know, is it a pneumothorax, is it something else? While they're getting, you know, and then they go to the CT scanner and they get the CTA chest. All right, so back to that dissection case. So here we have the great vessels and, and the aortic arch. So you see this, is the dissection going into the anominate. Here it is going into the left common carotid. And here it is going into the left subclavian. Oh, and it's going down too. So that's not it. So then we see it going down, down the aorta, uh, abdominal aorta, into the left um, common iliac. OK, so here's the surprise, the really scary part. Does anybody see it? actually two really scary things. So here's the kind of aortic valve. And this is the right coronary cusp. And here's the left coronary cusp. So this patient's, at this point, you know, we're getting ready to send the patient to Cherry Hill. And we see this, and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, is he going to even be able to make it? This is the dissection right above the right main coronary artery. And here's the dissection right above the left knee. I mean, so if these, you know, if those extend like they did in the neck, I mean, it's not good. So fortunately, he did well. Dr. Ryan, wait, where did I go? Oh, I'm totally uh, Dr. Ryan took care of him, and he's, he did great. Um, some surprises. Um, all right, so coronary anomalies are super uncommon. Um, but two weeks ago, here at Cherry Hill, I had three, and here they are. Um, this is one, so, and there are benign and malignant anomalies. And that doesn't mean they cause cancer. It means one can cause death and one doesn't. So, um, so this is a malignant anomaly. And this, they are both coming off the, this is the right coronary cusp. And this is the normal right coronary artery. And here's a, the left coronary artery. Left coronary artery should be coming off here. This is taking a really sharp angle and it's going between the aorta and the, um, pulmonary artery and the right ventricular outflow tract. So this is malignant because when the cardiac output goes up, that gets squished and that's bad. So I've got like 10 seconds left. So here we have it on this sagittal um, and this isn't it, that's motion artifact, but here's the left going in. And I don't think I have chief, uh, <laughs> chief privileges or, um, all right, but can we just, okay, so two more. So the, is this benign or malignant? So here's the normal right. Here's the um, left circumflex coming off. It's going to go like this. It's coming posterior. It's not interarterial. Inter it's coming back. Back by the, is that malignant or benign? If it goes between, so this one's benign. 
because it does not go between the, so the pulmonary out, or the right ventricular outflow tract is going to be, there's the right ventricle, and so it would go, <coughs> if it goes between here and intraarterial, that's malignant. If it goes back here, it's benign. So this one's benign. And wait, I told you I had three last week. Okay, so here's another one. There's the left main, and there's a tiny little right coronary. Benign or malignant. And I'll be done. Malignant, absolutely. Cardiac output gets up, that gets squished, and that's bad. All right, no rapid fire questions. Thank you.